In this video, we're going to be taking a look at loop recording ADR in Pro Tools and some of the playlist comping and editing features available, including a number of associated keyboard shortcuts. For convenience, I'll display the shortcuts on screen as and when I make reference to them, and I'll also summarize them on a single screen at the end of the video. So let's get started. I'll be using Pro Tools Ultimate for this tutorial, but the features we'll be looking at are all available in the standard version of Pro Tools as well. So here I have some footage which includes badly recorded dialogue. I actually shot this specifically for this tutorial so that the footage is copyright free. Let's take a listen. I think it's safe to say that this dialogue will need to be re-recorded as ADR. Okay, so it's a bad recording made in a conservatory. There are lots of reflections and the mic was also too far away. So this is a prime candidate for ADR. I'm going to re-record this dialogue in loop record mode, but before I do that, I just want to point out a preference which is relevant to this. So it's under the operation tab of preferences and it's this one, automatically create new playlists when loop recording. With this enabled, every loop recording will end up on its own playlist. This will make the subsequent editing a lot easier. I've created some ADR beeps for this session. For more information on how to create these, take a look at one of my other videos, how to create ADR beeps using keyboard shortcuts. So here's a line I want to replace. Here's my ADR beeps. The end of this clip group represents where the replacement line will start. So I want to align this with the start of that line. And the quickest way of doing this is to click where the line begins and then hold down on a Mac, Control and Command, and with the grabber tool, click on the beeps clip, and it aligns the end of it to where the cursor was. So hopefully now it should act as a counting. I think it's safe to say that this dialogue will need to be re-recorded as ADR. Okay, so I've already got a track set up for this. I'm just gonna name it. I'll call it ADR Paul. Uh, make the selection. Make sure we're in loop record mode, so I'm going to right click the record button, choose loop, and uh, I'll have a few goes of it. Here we go. I think it's safe to say that this dialogue will need to be re recorded as ADR. Okay, go again. I think it's safe to say that this dialogue will need to be re recorded as ADR. I think it's safe to say that this dialogue will need to be re-recorded as ADR. as ADR. I think it's safe to say that this dialogue will need to be re-recorded as ADR. ADR. I'll do two more. I think it's safe to say that this dialogue will need to be re-recorded as ADR. Last one. I think it's safe to say that this dialogue will need to be re-recorded as ADR. Okay, so that's several takes done. Obviously the first one was no good, but the others were at least in some part usable. Pro Tools will always display the last line you recorded on the main playlist. The other takes, if I just switch this into playlist view, will be displayed here. Incidentally, if you want to toggle between playlist and waveform view on that track, you can hold down Control and Command and click on the playlist view selector here. So that just goes between waveform, playlist, and back and forth like that. Now that we can see all of the alternate takes, if I press play now, the take that we hear will be the one on the main playlist. Let me just solo this. Last one. I think it's safe to say that this dialogue will need to be re-recorded as ADR. Okay, perhaps not the best acting skills, but that's why I'm operating Pro Tools most of the time rather than actually being behind the microphone. Anyway, if I want to hear any of the other playlists, I can just click on the solo button on that particular playlist. I think it's safe to say that this line will Move down, solo this next one. I think it's safe to say that this dialogue will need to be re-recorded as ADR. So you can solo these either by clicking on the solo button or if the edit cursor is on that particular playlist, then you can just press Shift S. And to move the edit cursor up and down through the playlists, the letter P on the keyboard moves it up and colon moves it down. That's dependent upon this. Commands focus needs to be enabled for the edit window in order for those single keystroke commands to work. If it isn't, you can still do it. You just hold down control with P or control with colon to move up or down through the playlists respectively. Let me just take a listen to this one. I think it's safe to say that this dialogue will need to be re-recorded as ADR. Okay, let's say that that's the best one. If I wanted to use this in its entirety on its own, I could just click on it and then to promote it up to the main track, well, there's more than one way of doing this, but I could click on this little up arrow and it moves it up onto the main track playlist. 
Or if I just undo that, the keyboard shortcut for this is Option, Shift, and the up arrow. So now that it's on the main playlist, I can unsolo this one. Let's just take a listen. I might just compare this to the original so I can check on the timing. I mean, you can see it from the lip sync, but it's also good to reference the audio. Here we go. I think it's safe to say that this dialogue will need to be re-recorded as ADR. That seems fine, but sometimes you'll want to comp something together from different parts of various takes. This again is very straightforward when using Playlist View. So I could solo a playlist, take a listen. I think it's safe to say, let's say I wanted that, I could select it, and then I could, once again, either click on the up arrow, or I could have done Option Shift and the up arrow on the keyboard. So we'll go with that part of that one and see if this is any good. But this dialogue will... Okay, we'll go with that. So select that little bit, do it from the keyboard. And then let's say we wanted this. Okay, I could listen to it first. We'll need to be re-recorded as ADR. Option shift up arrow, and then take a listen to that. Of course, we've got these little slithers of audio here and there, so I could edit those out. I think it's safe to say that this dialogue will need to be re-recorded as ADR. I'll just extend that to there. And of course, if you were doing this properly, you would then need to crossfade it, do some more editing on it, and maybe use Elastic Audio to conform it to fit the lip sync even better. Or if you had third party plugins such as Vocaline, that would be another tool to aid in the synchronization of the audio with the picture. I'm just going to play this through. I think it's safe to say that this dialogue will need to be re recorded as ADR. Considering the fairly random nature in which I did that, that doesn't actually sound too bad. It sounds reasonably consistent. I just want to mention a few more things about the playlist features. So far, I've been copying everything to the main playlist, as in the one that's currently assigned to the track. But actually, whenever you choose to copy something from one of the alternate playlists, it's actually going to move it to whichever playlist you have assigned as the target playlist. So if you haven't changed anything, then the main playlist will be the target playlist, but any of them can be the target. You'll notice in current versions of Pro Tools, whenever you have multiple playlists available for a track, the playlist selector is blue. In fact, I'll just switch back to waveform view for a second. One thing that you can do is to cycle through the alternate playlists from the keyboard. So shift and down arrow will cycle through them, or if you want to go back through them, shift and up arrow. The fact that this indicator is blue tells us that there are alternate playlists available and also that the currently displayed playlist is the target. So now we need to look at exactly what a target playlist is. Going back to playlist view then, we can see these little target buttons on each of the playlists. Any one playlist can be the target, and the one which is targeted is the playlist to which any comped audio is sent. For example, I can click on this target, make it the playlist, select some audio on another playlist, uh, click on this button or use the keyboard shortcut, and as you can see, it's now no longer going to the main playlist, just do this from the keyboard, but it's going to the one which is currently targeted, and you can tell which one is because it's highlighted in blue. If you take a look now at the playlist selector on the track, it's turned from blue to orange. This means that alternate playlists are available and that something other than the current main playlist is the target. There are various ways in which this could be useful. One way could be if I wanted to edit something together from various takes, but leave all of the existing playlists intact. So I could instead create a new playlist and make it the target. The shortcut for this is control and backslash. And then you could give it a name if you wanted. I'll just click OK. And then, of course, now we've got all of the playlists plus a new empty one. So to make this the target, I could do one of two things. I could either deselect this, and that goes blue, telling us that that's the target. Or alternatively, I could click on this, and you can see that we've now got this target playlist option. And then I could just choose any of them. So I'll choose the one that's currently on the main track, and that's now the target. Just one other quick point about this, if we did have something else as the target and then I clicked on this, the other option is to actually change the target not to a specific one, but to the main playlist. And what that means is if the main playlist changes to another playlist, it will still always be the one which is currently on the track that's the target of any of those previously mentioned editing operations. Rather than creating a new empty playlist as I just did, you could also select some audio on any playlist and then copy the selection to a new one using the shortcut Option Shift Down Arrow. And I'll just close this video window for a second. You can see we now have a new playlist with just that audio on. Of course you could then comp in the usual way. It's probably worth making this the target, so I'll click that. And then I'll do Option Shift Up Arrow, select another bit. Let's say it was, I don't know, this bit. Same again. 
and that again just gives you another option. As you've probably realised throughout this video, there are quite a number of shortcuts associated with all of this, and you can do it with the mouse, but by learning the shortcuts which will be useful to you, obviously you can speed up your workflow and get more done. There are just a few more shortcuts which I'd like to mention which relate to comping ADR. So if an alternate playlist such as this one is the targeted playlist, you can actually toggle the main playlist to this, just click there, using shift and right arrow. In order for this to work you have to first make sure that the edit cursor is in the main playlist. Let me just do this again. So let's target this one instead and then I'm going to make sure that we're parked somewhere in here, shift and right arrow and then the one which was previously the target playlist is the target, but it's now on the main playlist of the track. To toggle back and forth between that one and the previously shown playlist, just use shift and left arrow. And as you can see, it just alternates between those two playlists. Finally, if you want to quickly audition alternates for a section of the line, select the bit in question and then use command shift up arrow or command shift down arrow. So as you can see, it's cycling those and it's deriving those from the other playlists. Now, you might notice that little home icon that appears. This indicates that you're back to what was previously on that main playlist, rather than any of the alternates you've just cycled through. In order for this to be really useful, you probably have to enable pre and post roll and actually audition it. So I'm just gonna activate this, maybe just do one second either side. One thing about this um, is if you have pre and post roll on and you have it in loop playback, it's not going to play the post roll section. Let me just show you this. It's going to pre roll, and then when it gets into this bit, it'll just keep on looping and looping, and you'll never hear the post roll like this. It's safe to say that this dialogue, that this dialogue, so we don't want that. So I'll just turn loop playback off. Obviously, we'll have to stop it and start it again each time, but at least we can hear it. Here we go. So the first time I play it, we've got this. It's safe to say that this dialogue will need to be re. And then I'll do Command Shift Up Arrow or Down Arrow. Try that one. It's safe to say that this line will need to be... Oh, well, there's an interesting alternate. That was the first take I did, which was wrong. And um, we can just cycle through them and keep on trying it It's like safe that. to say that this dialogue will need to be re... Anyway, that's a basic overview of the ADR recording and track comping features in Pro Tools. As always, let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you again next time.